The most dangerous volcano in Mexico just erupted 200 times in a 24-hour period. But there has been an almost total blackout about this in the U.S. media. Authorities are saying that the odds of more volcanic activity at Mount Popocatapetl are immediate to high, and if a full-blown Plinian eruption were to occur, it would be the worst natural disaster in the modern history of North America. Approximately 26 million people live within 60 miles of Popocatapetl's crater, so we're talking about the potential for death and destruction on a scale that is difficult to imagine. In ancient times, Mount Popocatapetl buried entire Aztec cities in superheated mud, but then it went to sleep for about 1,000 years. Unfortunately for us, it started waking up again in the 1990s, and now this is the most active that we have seen it ever since the volcano originally reawakened. What we have witnessed over the last several days has been nothing short of stunning. According to a British news source, a level 3 yellow alert was put into effect after 200 eruptions were recorded in just 24 hours. Popocatapetl volcano, just 35 miles from Mexico City and 20 miles from Puebla, sent ash and plumes of smoke more than 1.5 miles high. Mexico's National Center for Disaster Prevention, Senapred, has warned people to keep away from Popocatapetl after 200 eruptions were recorded in just 24 hours. A level 3 yellow alert has been issued, meaning the chance of volcanic activity is immediate too high. The alert is just one away from a red alert, which would force locals to prepare for evacuation. At this point, a 7.5-mile security radius has been established around the volcano, and if things continue to get worse, authorities will be forced to begin large-scale evacuations. Mount Popocatapetl has been increasingly active in recent months, and authorities are concerned that all of this activity could be leading up to something really big. Local authorities are currently preparing for the worst-case scenarios and haven't ruled out more eruptions in the near future. In preparations, they've drafted a special operational plan allowing for quick evacuation of locals in case of any future emergencies. So what would a worst-case scenario for Mount Popper Catapedal look like? Well, scientists tell us that the volcano is capable of producing a catastrophic Plinian eruption. Popo Catapetal is considered the most threatening volcano in North America in terms of explosive activity and population threat. Its current low or moderate scale eruptive behavior can switch relatively quickly to a large, catastrophic Plinian eruption, the largest and most violent of all the types of volcanic eruptions, according to the volcanologists at the National History Museum. If you have never heard of a Plinian eruption before, here is Wikipedia's definition. Plinian eruptions or Vesuvian eruptions are volcanic eruptions marked by their similarity to the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD, which destroyed the ancient Roman cities of Herculaneum and Pompeii. The eruption was described in a letter written by Pliny the Younger after the death of his uncle, Pliny the Elder. Plinian or Vesuvian eruptions are marked by columns of volcanic debris and hot gases ejected high into the stratosphere, the second layer of Earth's atmosphere. The key characteristics are ejection of large amounts of pumice and very powerful, continuous gas-driven eruptions. According to the Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI, Plinian eruptions have a VEI of 4, 5, or 6, subplinian 3 or 4, and ultraplinian 6, 7, or 8. Short eruptions can end in less than a day, but longer events can take several days or even months. The longer eruptions begin with production of clouds of volcanic ash, sometimes with pyroclastic surges. The amount of magma erupted can be so large that it depletes the magma chamber below causing the top of the volcano to collapse, resulting in a caldera. We are talking about a disaster that could potentially kill millions. In the Aztec language, Popo Catapetl literally means smoking mountain, but to most of the locals, the volcano is simply known as Don Goyo. 
In ancient times, it produced giant tsunamis of superheated mud that completely buried entire Aztec cities. The following is an excerpt from one of my previous articles. Historians tell us that Popocatapetl had a dramatic impact on the ancient Aztecs. Giant mud flows produced by massive eruptions covered entire Aztec cities. In fact, some of these mud flows were so large that they buried entire pyramids in superheated mud. But we haven't witnessed anything like that in any of our lifetimes, so it's hard to even imagine devastation of that magnitude. In addition to Mexico City's mammoth population, there are millions of others that live in the surrounding region. Overall, there are about 25 million people that live in the immediate vicinity of Popocatapetl. Thankfully, we haven't seen a major eruption of the volcano in modern times, but at some point that will change. Hopefully, there will be enough warning before a Plinian eruption occurs, because several towns could be completely buried by superheated mud traveling at 60 miles per hour. While not every Plinian-sized eruption is alike in ferocity, all the volcanologists I spoke with provided grave details about Popo's shore devastation. First, you would see 1,000-degree lahars and pyroclastic flows speeding down at 60 miles per hour. Those flows would reach most, if not all, of the towns in the high-risk area, which today include Santiago Salitintla, population 2,196, and San Pedro Benito Juarez, 3,153, and Buena Vista, population 814. No human on the entire planet can run that fast. If people are able to get to their vehicles in time, they would have a chance, but in reality, the highways would quickly become completely clogged as thousands of escaping vehicles all converged at the same time. Mexico City would be out of the range of the tsunami of superheated mud, but the truth is that the volcanic ash would kill far more people. Even just breathing in the volcanic ash could potentially be a death sentence. The real threat, of course, begins after the lava halts. If the wind blew in Mexico City's direction, a city-sized cloud of ash 20 centimeters thick would descend upon the buildings, dismantling roadways, shutting down airports and the metro line. Breathing it in could kill you. And that's just the first day. After that, seeping ash would clog Mexico City's drainage lines, poisoning its water supplies, and ceasing electricity transmission via short-circuiting. With food supplies cut off and no electricity, the dense metropolis would probably resemble something like the World Trade Center the night of September 11th, except with three times as many people attempting to flee, all under the veil of an ash-blackened sky. Ultimately, we are talking about an event that would mean the end of the modern nation of Mexico as we know it today. And this is the most active that Mount Popocatapetl has been in any of our lifetimes. Are you starting to understand why I get so frustrated with the mainstream media? What is happening to Mount Popocatapetl should be front page news all over the country, and yet the mainstream media is almost completely ignoring it. Meanwhile, a volcano in Washington state is starting to vent steam and gas. I bet you hadn't heard about that either. Mount Baker is 31 miles due east of Bellingham, Washington, and all through the month of March, steam and gas have been pouring out of the volcano. The state's quartet of the potentially eruptive peaks are all part of the Cascade Mountain Range, and the northernmost is Mount Baker, which is located in Whatcom County, 31 miles east of Bellingham. On March the 4th, the 10,781-foot-tall volcano began producing a number of steam plumes known as fumaroles. The expulsions have continued throughout the month since then, and several have been highly visible from many miles away, widely captured in photographs and cell phone videos. Those of you that are familiar with my work know that I am much more concerned about Mount Rainier. When that volcano starts venting steam and gas, I am likely to really start freaking out. But Mount Baker is a very because of its proximity to human population. Mount Baker last erupted in 1843, but in several recent publications, the U.S. Geological Survey has maintained that Washington State's third highest peak continues to present a serious threat 
due to the frequency of its eruptive history and the volcano's proximity to human population. We are seeing a rise in seismic activity all along the Ring of Fire, and as I have frequently warned, North America will not be immune from what is taking place. The entire west coast lies directly along the Ring of Fire, and seismologists assure us that it's just a matter of time before we witness absolute massive natural disasters. And with all of the shaking that's currently going on, the truth is that time may be running out a lot more quickly than many of us had been anticipating.